Good morning, everyone. My name is Tai, and I'm from Penn State. I'm here to present a paper, Social Boss on Fire, Modeling Efforts of Behaviors of Social Boss via Multi-Agent Hierarchical Reinforcement Learnings. The motivation of our paper is as follows. On social medias, they are the presence of social boss. And to detect and remove them, previous work proposed to collect the data, label them, and then use those label data to build a machine learning detection models. However, 2020s, Presley published a paper called A Decade of Social Boss Detections, and the authors mentioned that the social boss actually involved over time. So for social boss used to be just spam boss, and they are quite simple, and they have simple profile, simple descriptions, and they just spam uh, same message over again. However, nowadays, spam boss has evolved to become social boss, and they have dedicated user profiles. They even have a real human pictures, and they even interact with real humans to sh share and propagate fakes or disinformation. In fact, experienced humans were able to tell apart newer bots from legitimate users only 24% of the times, while it was 91% for previous owner bots. And this forced the social bot detection models developers to come back and collect more data over time to develop a more advanced social bot detection models. And this is a cat and mouse game that never ends. In this paper, we motivate us the questions how to computation, computationally model the social bot behaviors and train them and synthesize better social bots and use them for detection models. We call this problem adversarial social bots learning. In the social networks such as Twitter, we have a network of different users they are, can be the followers or followers of each other, and some of them are very influ influential users, such as Elon Musk. And we have the presence of social boss. So there are two goals of the social boss. The first goal is to facilitate mass information propaga propaganda by accumulating good seed fo followers. Assuming this social boss says a piece of fake news, COVID-19 vaccine is only water. So given a piece of fake news, this social bot first need to grow its network of followers to influence. In this case, this social bot can connect with these two influential users. And after that, whenever it spread a fake news, it hopes that this news is going to be propagated through our own users in the net network. In the social network, there's also the presence of bot detection models. And these bot detection models will use the features of the bots or of each users to determine whether these users are in fact bots or not. And if they are a social bots, it will be removed from the social medias. This motivates the second goal of social bots. It needs to be able to invade a social bot detection models or not to be detected and removed. And the goal one and goal two are intertwined goals and they are related to each other. In, a, in order to model these adversarial social bot learning problems, we create an environment with different assumptions. First, we assume that a social network and a network of followers and followers of different users. And we use the independence case based model to model how a piece of information propagate from one users of one from one node to the others. And we model this problem as a temporal sequence problems. At the time steps T zeros, the social board first need to make the decisions who to acquire as a followers. Let's say the social board trying to acquire the users A as one of, of its followers. Next, the social board need to make the second decisions. Which type of action to take to acquire this specific users? In the Twitter, we have the four actions, tweet, retweet, reply, and mentions. In this case, let's say the social board use the action mentioned to acquire the user's name. 
because user A here looks like normal users. It only have one followers. That's why uh, it is very easy for the social bot to acquire these users because these users seem not to be an influencer users. Now, if the social bot wants to spread a piece of fake news, it can easily spread to A because A is now is a follower of the social bot. And then from A, using the independent sketch case more model, the fake news can be propagated to B and even to the user C. However, the, the deeper or the further away from the source, the lesser chance of influence the in influence. In other words, this piece of fake news might not be able to propagate to the user C. This motivates us the assumption that a good network of flowers is crucial to distribute the information. Let's look at a similar scenarios, but in this case, instead of choosing the users A, it's also about choosing the users B as the target followers. And after acquiring the target users B, given a piece of fake news, the social bot can spread its fake news to user B because user B is a direct follower. And from B, this piece of fake news can propagate to CA and many other followers. And in this case, the user B is a better target than the user A because the user B has more followers than the users A. In other words, users B is a more influential user. Let's come back to our scenarios. After the time step T0, the next time step is the time step T1. At the time step T1, let's assume that the social board just tweet some something. And then at the time step T0, T2, the social board wants to acquire the next users, which is the users B with the action retweet. However, because the users B is more influential than the social board, because it, it, in social users B has four different followers, why, why the social board only have one? And this, because of this, the environment will force the social boss to do more to convert B to a followers. In this case, the social board is forced to repeat the action retweet, not only one time, but an, an additional twice. After that, the, source, the users B is going to become a follower of the social board. After five actions, the environment social board detection model still runs. In this case, we set a social board detection will run every k actions and here k equal to five. And the social board detection models will use the sequence of the actions. Here the sequence is mentioned, tweet, retweet, retweet, and retweet. And based on this sequence of actions, a black box machine learning models will determine if this social board or if this users is actually social board or not. This shows that connecting with influential users is risky and must strategize because whenever we connect with the influential users, the environment will force the social boss to do more or to exercise a repeated actions and that can affect the probabilities it's gonna be detected by the machine learning detection model. In order, in order to model this so, adversarial behavior of social boss, we use high, high, hierarchical reinforcement learning or the ACOM model. Let's look again what action the social boss has made. The social boss has made the sequence of actions and what users it wants to acquire as followers. And then the a black box social boss detection models will use a sequence of actions to detect whether this users is bot or human. We assume that we can model the sequence of actions using the using a reinforcement learning learning agents. In this case, we call it the reinforcement learning agent one. This agent will decide which type of action to text. 
And after the agent one decides which type of actions, another reinforcement learning agent two will decide which users are the object of the actions to take. And we model these reinforcement learning problems with the objective functions to optimize the reward. The re reward in this case is the number of users in the social network that can be reached via propagations. And at, at every time steps, the environments will give feedbacks to the agent one and agent two using the current reward. And this reward is going to be used to improve the agent one and agent two over time. In other words, we use this framework to model the two adversarial behaviors of social balls. Experiments. One problem we're facing with re reinforcement learning is it needs continuous feedbacks. So how we can generate high quality training da data. In order to do this, we propose to generate synthetic graph for training and test with a real graph. Synthetic networks have similar statistics called characteristics of the real graph. Specifically, given a small number of real networks, we use 10% of them and extract statistics and we generate on the fly synthetic networks and we use these synthetic networks to train our reinforcement learning models. And the remaining 90% of real, real network we collected, we will use for testing. In other words, we're learning on synthetic and testing on real networks. Results. First, we measure the network influence ratios. Network influence ratio is the ratio between the number of users that a piece of news can reach in a network over on the number of own users in a network. And here we test with different P value and the higher the P, the more viral our news is. And our model is the red lines. As you can see on the plot, ACONS, our model, including agent one, agent two, collaborates to maximize the performance and they outperform other baselines. Regarding runtimes, as you can see at the plot, our agent two or ACON, the inference is much more efficient than which is a very popular baseline in, in influence maximization on graph. During inference, our model icon is much more efficient in terms of run, running times and computational complexities. We also want to gain some insight on what kind of strategies that our model learn over time. And you can see this at the very beginnings of the inference, the train source most intelligently connects with normal users first before connecting with popular users. And this enable the social boss not to be detected by the social boss detection models early and removed early. Therefore, it can maintain its network of influence over a period of time. Discussion and limitations. Our model, our, our ACORN, can assign multiple boards to several sub-networks. So if we have a network that is very large, we can split this large network into sub-networks and assign multiple social boards to multiple sub-networks and, and, and spread in, uh, misinformation at the same time. And our paper proposed a more proactive approach for social board detections. Because now we can use ACORN to train events synthesized ever social boss and use these social boss behaviors to improve the social board detection models. Our future work, including doing experiments on this. And we publicly publish our uh, reinforcement learning environments so that all other researchers can test other assumptions and constraints. Our social media environment. 
thank you very much. And here is the link to the source code of the paper. All right, uh, Tai, thank you so much. It was a very interesting talk. Uh, any questions from the audience? I have a first question, if that's okay. Yeah, yes, yes sure. absolutely. So, uh, yeah, nice, nice work. I, I was wondering, are you worried, you know, this, this can be used also to improve kind of fake news social bots, right? So, and okay. also you made the code public. So, you know, I understand you want to use this as a good benchmark, but are you also worried that it can be abused in some sense, looking at thinking of the ethical side of things? Yeah, correct. So, um, in the paper, we also discussed that like there's a potential use of these techniques because um, if you look at the papers, uh, when we when we develop the environment, we consider the social bot detection model as a black box. So in theory, we can just deploy these strategies in, on Twitter's Facebook and just let it learn over time. Um, however, there are a lot of assumptions in, in the paper that we make that can be arguably re either realistic or unrealistic. Um, so a lot of uh, further works need to be developed upon this uh, to make sure that uh, it really works uh, and it really safe. Yeah. And thank you for your questions. Okay, uh, Ty, I got one question in the chat. Uh, so does this model consider that social bots may be coordinating with each other in who to follow? Uh, Priyanka is asking this question. Yeah, thank you so much for the question. This is a very interesting questions. Um, we actually consider that um, as our next step uh, from uh, from these papers. So from this paper, we have two learn machine learning, uh, two reinforcement learning agents, but they are two functions of the same social board. So the future what would be we scale up um, to multiple social board, coordinate together at the same time to optimize the strategies. So you can you can think of uh, scenarios where one social bot will just like trying to um, uh, acquire as many as followers, and the other social bot it can just connect with that social bot and just spread fake news. Right? Um, yeah. Thank you so much for the question. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Uh, and I, I, I personally have one quick question. So you've discussed in the paper that uh, your framework could be used as a double-edged sword. Uh, so uh, for spreading, uh, you know, low credibility content uh, over social media. So uh, if you can explain for the audience how you, how kind of you're sure that the benefits that your framework actually provides outweigh the, you know, these side effects or. Yeah. Um... I have not thought about how to really control the malicious actors because it's our, our control. Um, but one interesting thing that we can get from this paper is that um, we want to move from um, passive defense to a proactive defense where we think ahead. Okay, now we have a models and this model can really see what is what, what we need in the futures to improve our current detection models. And we can generate more synthesized advanced social bots and use them as additional data to improve our model over time without waiting for the actual advanced social bots to happen. So in the very long term, I think uh, we can cut down the cat and mouse games and really make advance in the field. Yeah. 